So the next talk is by Megan Stevenson on quantum versus classical neural networks. Um, is my, pro oh, <laughs> um, my project was with supervisor Prunot and was titled Quantum versus Classical Neural Networks. Um, could you move to the next slide, please? The aim of this project was to compare classical and quantum neural networks because quantum neural networks are a fairly new concept, but it has been suggested that they can solve problems faster than a classical neural network. To carry out this investigation, I tested the ability of both a classical and quantum neural network to fit a sine curve and measured the accuracy and training time of both networks. On the next couple of slides, I go into more detail of classical and quantum neural networks. But I'm just going to explain some concepts for people who haven't heard of these terms before. Our brains are made up of neural circuits, which are neurons in connected by synapses that carry out specific functions. Neural networks are designed to use these properties to recognize patterns with classical neural networks being made up of neurons and quantum neural networks or gates. Machine learning is a process to improve the accuracy of the output of a network. Um, could you go to the next slide? The image in the top right is a classical neural network with the circles being neurons and the lines connecting them weights. And it can be seen that the network consists of an input layer, a hidden layer and an output layer. The given inputs and desired outputs are put into the input layer. So in this case, the given inputs are 50 random numbers between minus one and one and the desired outputs were the sign of these values. The output layer is where the network outputs its predictions for each of the random numbers inputted. The error is then calculated by comparing the desired outputs from the input layer and the predictions. The network then updates its weights to minimize the error. This process is called supervised learning and is a type of machine learning. I coded my own classical neural network and then investigated the accuracy of the network versus size. So I changed the number of hidden layers and the numbers of neurons per hidden layer. I found that increasing the number of neurons per hidden layer increases the accuracy up to around 150 to 100 neurons, and the accuracy doesn't change significantly when changing the number of hidden layers. So I concluded of the networks I investigated, a network with one hidden layer of 150 neurons would be the best because it's the simplest network that gives the highest accuracy. Um, can I go to the next slide, please? Quantum neural networks combines classical quantum neural networks with quantum information and instead of and instead neuron gates are, of instead of neurons, gates are used. I coded a quantum neural network and looked at the ideal network size. I found increasing the number of layers increased the accuracy up to six layers where it starts to plateau. So I concluded the network with six layers gives the best result. I then compared a quantum and classical neural network to see which one performed better. I found using my data size of 50, a classical neural network produced a higher accuracy, although it took a much longer to train. However, when reducing the data size, the quantum neural network produced a higher accuracy and was faster to train. So it can be seen from my research that quantum neural networks has the potential to outperform a classical neural network. However, this conclusion is only from fitting one function. So further work can be done into fitting other functions or for other tasks like classification. When investigating classical neural networks, I also looked at batch size and dropout. And for quantum neural networks, I also looked at the effect of cut off dimension. So if you would like more information on this, please refer to my poster. Thank you for listening. And do you have any questions? Thank you very much, Megan. Are there any questions? Um. So it, it looks like we don't, there's no questions from Megan. So thank you very much again for your talk. Thank you. And at this point, uh, this, is the, um, this is the end of the presentations. I would like to once again thank all the students for the very nice talks. Um, you all produced amazing results over the summer. Uh, so congratulations again. And I want to thank everyone for attending. Uh, you can refer to the posters if you want more information about the projects and I hope you found this um, experience useful uh, for, the, for the students. Thank you very much.